Hey everyone, this is Samal and if you're new to my channel and want to learn more about biology in a simple yet detailed way, then go ahead and subscribe. In this video, I would just like to share with you what I think about the Corona virus. So with that in mind, I hope that everyone is keeping safe and staying healthy. Anyway, we all know what this virus looks like. Okay, we know how it is structurally. Okay, and uh, it has a positive sense single-stranded RNA, and what that means is it resembles structurally the structure of the messenger RNA that is found in the eukaryotic cells. So it doesn't have to be transcribed from DNA into RNA. The RNA of the virus can be directly translated into the various enzymes and proteins that the virus will use to make more copies of itself. The RNA of the virus is actually contained within an envelope of um, a lipid bilayer. And outside that lipid bilayer, you have these protruding structures that come out like spikes or spines, and hence the name coronavirus because corona comes from the Greek word coronas, which actually means a crown or a wreath. So the coronavirus has these spikes that are made up of these S proteins on its outer surface and why these spike proteins are very important is that they have the ability to bind onto specific um, receptors that are present on the cells inside your respiratory tract more specifically the cells inside the alveoli of your lungs so when the coronavirus enters your lungs you know and bind to the receptors in the cells of your lungs then we get all these flu like symptoms like fever and headaches but we'll get more into that in this video right now i just want to talk about why some of us are asymptomatic that is we don't produce any symptoms so the first theory suggests that if somehow you've encountered this um, similar viruses in the past you know similar coronaviruses in the past that causes um, these uh, respiratory tract um, infections in humans if you had encountered these in the past then your cells will produce these memory T cells okay and what they do is these T cells are antigen specific and they will bind onto the uh, spike proteins of the coronavirus okay? and if that happens then the coronavirus will not be able to lodge or bind into the receptors in your lungs so hence you become asymptomatic another theory is well guess what wearing a mask okay that's why wearing a mask is so important right even if you contract the virus the amount of virus that enters your respiratory system we call that the viral load okay and if the viral load is very low so low that even if the virus enters your body while wearing a mask you know you have your first line of defense your second line of defense okay your skin, the hairs on your nasal passages, the mucus lining in your nasal passages as well as in your respiratory tract, the macrophages, they will all kill whatever little amount of virus that enters your body. So that is another theory. So wear a mask, right? Wear two masks. But then again, these new variants, these new mutated strains, they have the ability to become more resistant and bypass your first line and your second line of defense and when that happens they can get into your alveoli and bind to those receptors that are present on the cells of the alveoli so what happens when the coronavirus bypass your mask bypass your first line and second line of defense it will enter your lungs and goes into the alveoli and bind to the specific receptor known as the angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor that are present on the type pneumocyte of your alveoli when we take a closer look inside of the lungs we will see the structural and functional units of the lungs and these are the alveoli and each alveolus is made up of two types of cells the first type is the type 1 pneumocyte that is involved in the respiratory exchange of gases and the second type is the type 2 pneumocyte which is involved in maintaining the surface tension of each alveoli and the surface of the alveoli are highly vascularized in having these very rich network of blood capillaries that come from 
the pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery. So when the coronavirus makes its way into the lungs and enters the alveoli, what will happen? The virus will then dock and bind to the ACE2 receptor or angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor of the type 2 pneumocyte. And once the coronavirus has attached itself onto the surface of the type 2 pneumocyte, it will then release its RNA into the cytoplasm of the cell. Then it will use the ribosome of the type 2 pneumocyte to synthesize its own proteins and enzymes. And one of the first thing that it does is to make its own RNA polymerase, also known as the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And this RNA polymerase will then use the positive sense single-stranded RNA of the virus as a transcript to make its own negative single-stranded RNA. And the RNA polymerase of the virus will then use the negative single-stranded RNA to make more positive sense single-stranded RNA. The ribosome of the pneumocyte will then again be used to translate the viral RNA into different polypeptides that will be eventually converted or combined to make these different types of proteins that the virus will need. Those proteins are the S proteins that will eventually become the spike proteins, the N proteins, that will become the nucleoproteins and bound the new RNAs, the M proteins as well as the E proteins that will be embedded within the lipid bilayer envelope. And all of these proteins together with the newly copied positive sense single-stranded RNA will be combined to make new coronaviruses within the type 2 pneumocyte. And these newly formed coronavirus will exit the type 2 pneumocyte and enter the lumen of the alveoli and they will enter other pneumocytes within the various alveoli of the lungs. So now those uh, newly replicated coronavirus will exit this infected type 2 monocyte and will try to infect other cells of the alveoli and also try to exit this alveoli and the viruses will try to infect the cells that are present in other alveoli as well. So now the macrophage will sense this. Once it senses this, it will try to counteract the infection of the coronavirus. So it will release certain specific cytokines like uh, interleukin 1 for example, interleukin 6 as well as a tumor necrosis factor alpha and these cytokines will cause inflammation these cytokines will then act on the endothelial cells of the surrounding blood capillaries and this will cause vasodilation and will cause the endothelial cells to become highly permeable and when that happens all the fluid and cells in the blood capillaries will then flood the surrounding spaces, the surrounding area of the alveolus. At the same time, these cytokines will then move through the circulatory system into the brain and travel into the central nervous system and signal the hypothalamus, which is the endocrine gland located just below the brain, to raise the body's core temperature. And that is when someone will have a fever. The cytokines will also attract neutrophils to the site of infection and they will release reactive oxygen species that will kill the viruses. But at the same time, the reactive oxygen species will also damage the cells of the alveoli, particularly the type 1 pneumocytes which are responsible for the cellular exchange of gases. And if that happens, then it will lead to a decrease in the oxygen levels in the cells and tissues. And we call that condition hypoxia. And now you have this highly inflamed and highly infected alveolus that is pooling up cellular debris as well as the substances and materials of the virus itself. And at the same time, you have that fluid on the outside of this alveolus that is surrounding it from all sides. And within that alveolus, 
the type 2 pneumocyte can no longer perform its function and what will happen now that perfectly rounded elastic alveolus will then simply collapse under all that pressure and when that happens then someone will struggle to breathe someone will be gasping for air so you have these pneumonia like symptoms and if you're someone who is already having a compromised immune system or having any other related respiratory disorders then the coronavirus can become more lethal and now you have these new strains this new uh, delta strain which is highly infectious can be transmitted very fast from one person to the next person but how do we fight this by being vigilant by wearing two masks by washing our hands by maintaining a physical distance from each other and by getting ourselves vaccinated because vaccination although is not a cure it is an added layer of protection a vaccination is like a life jacket because when you go out for a boat ride out in the water if an accident happen you might fall out of the boat but at least the life jacket will keep you from drowning you might still get wet but at least you're going to survive same thing with a vaccination you might still get the disease you might still get covid-19 but at least you won't be in a life threatening situation hope you found this video insightful Thank you.